everyone. So for today's video, we are going to discuss the measures of dispersion. So from our two previous videos, we have discussed measures of central tendency and measures of locations. So now, ibang measure naman po yung hahanapin natin sa data and that is the measure of dispersion to which the measure of dispersion, dispersion measures how spread the data is to help describe the data further. Ibig sabihin, uh, kinocompute mo kung gaano kalayo-layo yung ating mga data sa bawat isa. Okay po? That is what the measures of dispersion is. And we actually have two measures of dispersion. The first one is the absolute measure of dispersion while the other one is the relative measure of dispersion. So what is the difference between them? An absolute measure of dispersion is that uh, kinocompute kino mo yung pagkakalayo-layo niya so that you can you can differentiate it within the data set. Kung meron kang isang data set, madidescribe mo yung data set lang. Doon ka lang sa loob ng data set mo, kunwari, weight in kilograms lang. So, doon mo lang siya madidescribe. Yun po yung ibig sabihin ng absolute measure of dispersion. Pero, kapag sinabi natin relative measure of dispersion, is kinocompute mo yung pagkakalayo-layo niya in percent para makumpara mo ngayon siya sa ibang data set. Okay? Kunwari, uh, hindi mo naman kasi pwedeng ipag-compare ang, ang weight in kilograms sa saka ang height in centimeters kasi magkaiba sila ng unit of measurement. Okay? So, kung may absolute measure of dispersion ka para kay weight in kilograms, dun lang yon. Pag meron kang absolute measure of dispersion kay uh, height in centimeters, dun lang yon sa height in centimeters. Pero, kapag relative measure of dispersion, dahil in percent form na siya, pwede mo siyang ipagkumparang dalawa. Okay, kasi unitless po ang relative measure of dispersion. So, pwede mo siyang mapag-compare kung ano yung mas layo-layo or kung ano yung mas lapit-lapit. Okay, so under the absolute measure of dispersion is number one, the what we so-called range. The range is the difference between the minimum and the maximum value. So, we will be using again the example that we have, uh, that we have used uh, uh, sa ating previous video. Okay? So, uh, from the from the meaning of the range, it is the difference between the minimum and the maximum. So, kung meron kang minimum, ang minimum natin sa data set natin, this is our data set. Okay? So, yung data set natin, ang minimum daw natin is 85 and our maximum is 95. So, para makuha daw yung range natin, ay, ang gagawin lang natin is for us to deduct the maximum. So, we have here the range equals the maximum minus our minimum value. Okay? So, if our if our min maximum value is 95, so the range would be equivalent to 95 minus 85. At, para makuha yung range, is, we just need to simplify this, then the range of our data set is 10. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, uh, malayo ng sampung agwat yung ma pinakamaliit at pinakamalaki mo value. That is what we so called the range. Okay, so we can just write down here our range as F. Okay. So, ito po yung formula in getting the range. Maximum minus the minimum. Okay. So, next absolute measure of dispersion is the what we so called interquartile range when we say interquartile range it is na it is the difference between the third and the first quartile so ibig sabihin we need to get first the first quartile and the third quartile okay but in the light of the knowledge na uh, nakuha natin kay percentile so now uh, para makuha natin yung quartile 3 or yung third quartile, ano pong equivalent niya sa uh, percentile? That is actually P75. Nama po? So, that would be P75. And our first quartile is P25. So, kukunin po natin si P75 at si P25. Okay? So, si P75 muna. So, ang J natin, the value of our J here is 75. So, para makuha natin yung L or yung location is that we need to 
uh, we need to divide 75 by 100. Okay? And then, ito po ay multiply natin saan? multiply natin sa <clears throat> the number of observation, which is the value of n. That is 0.75 times 40. So, we have 0 0.75 multiplied by 40. So, we are looking, the value of our L now is, the value of our L is 30. Since this is a whole number, we are looking for the Lf term and the L plus 1 term. So, we are looking for the 30th and the 31st term. So, nasan po kaya yung 30th at saka yung 31st term? So, tingin po tayo kay less than cumulative frequency. Si 30th po ay nandito kay... 35. Si 31st ay nandito din kay 35. Hence, our our 75th percentile ay that would be 92 plus 92 kasi ang ating 30th ang ating 30th term ay 92 ang ating 31st term ay 92 din. So, yung average ng dalawa is is what? That is still 92. So, our P75 is what? 92. And then, we now lo uh, we now get what p25 okay so p25 that would be the value of our j there is 25 so we have here 25 divided by 100 so that's 0.25 and then we are going to multiply it with the value of n which is 40 hence we are looking for the location is what the location is 10 down and 10 is also a whole number. So, we are to look for the 10th and the 11th term. So, an nasan po kaya yung 10th na term natin? So, balik po ulit tayo kay less than cumulative. Nasan po yung pang 10? Siya po ay nandito kay 11. So, we have here, anong value ni 11? That is 86. So, ang ating 10th term ay 86. Ang ating 11th term is also, so, ayun siya. Nandun pa rin kay 11. So, we have 86. Hence, our... P25 is 86. So, hindi pa po yan yung ating interquartal range. Okay? Yung interquartal range or uh, commonly known as IQR is what? IQR ay difference daw ng third at first quartile. So, that would be quartile 3 minus that would be quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So, if our quartile 3 is Ang ating first, ang third quartile is 92. So, that would be IQR equals 92 minus our first quartile is 86. Hence, our IQR is, so what is 92 minus 86? So, that would be 6. Alright, so that would be our IQR. Okay po? So, that is the, what we so-called, interquartile range. So, next is the what we so-called variance. Yung variance naman is the average square deviation of each observation from the mean. So, importante po dito yung mean natin. Kasi, dito kay variance, tinete, uh, tinukuha natin yung square deviation niya or gano'n ba siya kalayo dun sa mean ng naka-square. Okay? So, in getting the variance, we are given the formula this is, I know this is omega, O square, or the variance. So, the variance is sim, uh, is commonly symbolized as this one. Equals the summation of x sub i minus mean square over n. Alright, so, i-dissect po natin is bawat isa dun sa formula. So, ang una po natin gagawin is for us to subtract the mean to every what? To every that is to every data or to every term na meron tayo sa ating data set. Now, hindi na po natin papahirapan yung sarili natin na iisa-isahin pa po natin to. So, we will be using the table. So, copy lang natin to. So, we have here this one. So, this will be our data. And what we are going to do is <clears throat> to subtract it with the mean. So, that is x sub i minus the mean. Okay? So, yung x sub i minus mean natin, alam natin that our mean is 89. So, that would be, our x sub i first is 85. So, that would be 85. This is 85 minus our mean, which is 80. 
89. Our mean is 89. Hence, yung una nating difference would be negative 4. So, yung difference natin, uh, ito po yung tinatawag natin na difference. Or yung D dun sa inyong mga module. Okay? So, si X sub I minus mean. And then, we'll do the same process with all the data here. So, pwede naman natin siyang idrag na lang dito. Okay po? So, this would be our differences. And what we are going to do with these differences is what? Ang gagawin natin dito sa ating differences na ito ay e-square po natin. So, ang gagawin lang natin is balik tayo dun sa table. So, ito, ayan po, ay gagawin lang natin, multiply lang natin siya sa sarili niya. So, that is negative 4 multiplied by negative 4. So, that is negative 4 times negative 4, that's positive 16. And then, we'll do the same process with all the data. Okay? So, yan po yung magiging uh, kinalabasan ng ating x sub i. So, that is x sub i minus mean square. So, yan po kapag in-square na po natin yung differences. Now, ito po ay hindi lang po isa-isa. Diba? Meron pa po tayong frequency. So, we need to, para makuha natin yung <clears throat> summation ng x sub i minus mean square, kailangan muna natin i-multiply ito with our frequency. So, this one, i-multiply ngayon natin siya sa frequency. Okay? Kasi nga, gina ginamitan na lang natin siya ng shortcut. Hindi na natin ilisa-isa dito. Ginamit na lang natin yung table. Okay, so that is frequency. So this one, i-multiply natin siya sa frequency. So copy lang natin yung frequency dito. So these are the frequency. Okay, so these are the frequency of each data. And what we're going to do is for us to multiply it with yung uh, square ng difference. So, we have 7 times 16. Okay, so we have 16 times 7. So, that would be 112. And then, we do the rest with all the data hanggang dun sa dulo. Okay po? So, that would be our, uh, that would be the frequency multiplied by the square of its differences. And then, so, nakuha na po natin yung taas. Okay, so, nakuha na natin yung taas. And what we're going to do is just to add them all. So, i-add lang po natin ito. I-add lang natin ito. So, we have here equals sum. Ibig sabihin ng sum is i-add natin ito. Dadrag mo lang yung, yung cursor. So, we have here. So, the sum is 360. So, yung 360 natin is para makuha natin yung variance natin. So, the variance Para makuha natin yung variance natin using this formula is that we have the summation of x sub i minus mean square. So, nakuha na po natin ito and that is 360 with that of, i-divide natin siya with the value of n. To which our value of n is what? Our value of n is 40. So, variance is equal to what? Variance is equal to 360 divided by 40. And... Our variance now would be 9. Okay? So, 9 po yung ating value ng variance. And then, what we're going to do is for us to have the other uh, absolute measure of dispersion. And that is the what we so called standard deviation. Okay? Pag sinabi natin standard deviation, it is the positive square root of the variance. So, kung meron ka ng variance, ang gagawin mo na lang is for you to get its square root or positive square root. If our variance is 9, then our standard deviation is what? Gulat na sinabi dito, positive square root of the variance. So, square root mo lang yung value ng variance mo. Ang value ng variance mo ay 9. So, that is the square root of the square root of what? The square root of 9. And that would be 3. Okay po? So, that would be the, the absolute measure of dispersion ng data natin. So, what does this mean? Ibig sabihin, yung data daw natin ay three standard deviations away from our mean, which is 89. Okay? So, yan po yung, uh, yan po yung average na nalayo ng ating bawat data sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, bawat observation sa ating data set. Okay po? And that is what we so-called standard 
deviation. Okay? And let us now proceed with the last one. That is the what we so called the relative measure of dispersion. So, tulad na sinabi ko, si absolute measure of dispersion, dun lang sa loob ng data set mo. Pero kapag nagkaroon ka na ng relative measure of dispersion, yung sagot dito, pwede mo nang i-compare sa ibang data set. Okay? So, the relative measure of dispersion is the coefficient of variation to which the meaning of this is that it is the comparability of between or among different set or different data sets. So, tulad ng sinabi ko, pwede mo ngayon siyang ikumpara sa ibang data set. And for us to get the coefficient of variation or the CV, we have here the standard deviation. So, that is the standard deviation divided by the mean multiplied by 100. Okay, so we have standard deviation. Nakuha na po natin si standard deviation kanina and that is 3. So for us to get the coefficient of variation, that is what? That is, tulad ng nasa formula, standard deviation, that is 3 divided by the mean. What is our mean? Our mean here is 89. Okay, so ang gagawin natin is 3 divided by 89. And then what we're going to do with this value is to multiply this with 100% and our coefficient of variation now would be 3.1 so much better kung uh, two, uh, 2 decimal places lang para mas simplify alright so ibig sabihin our coefficient of variation is 3.37% ano pong ibig sabihin nun 3.37% lang silang magkakalayo dun sa mean Alright? Di ba napakaliit na value? So, ibig sabihin, medyo dikit-dikit yung iyong mga value sa iyong data set. And that is what the measure of dispersion is telling us.